The following is an audio version of my latest blog, Just How High Are You? Cellular Altitude, Part 2. I'm Mark Fletcher, Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 in 4. In my blog last week, I reported on the FCC initiative requiring cellular carriers to provide what is called the Z-axis on cellular calls to 911. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Z-axis reports altitude. Why is this important? Well, knowing the elevation, calculating the floor that a person is on in a multi-story building is possible and then delivered to first responders. Well, to say the least, this blog sparked many questions with several people wondering why this has been such a problem. So to answer some of those inquiries, I decided to do a deeper dive into the topic and expand everyone's knowledge. The first part of the question is, how do I calculate altitude? In most cases, calculating altitude is accomplished through barometric pressure measurement. But this measurement on its own is worthless without knowing the barometric pressure at the ground level of the location of where you are. So if you really think about it, the altitude is not the information that a first responder needs. It's the elevation or distance above the ground that's needed so they can determine what floor number you're on. So for example, measuring altitude is typically measured as the distance above mean sea level. So if a device is 120 feet above sea level and the ground level is 100 feet above sea level, the elevation is 20 feet or the second floor, allowing 10 feet per floor which, by the way, is another variable that needs to be understood and agreed upon by the measuring device and the receiving device. Now you can start to see the complexity. So even if your new smartphone can measure the barometric pressure, which many of them do, and determine that you're at a particular altitude, calculating the elevation is impossible without knowing the base ground level. Now another simple way to collect altitude information is through GPS. Again, if you have a smartphone device with a GPS receiver and good visibility to three or four satellites, the altitude calculation can be reasonably accurate. However, here's the problem with GPS. GPS radio signals are challenging to receive indoors because these signals are already very weak when they reach the ground from the satellites in outer space. And those signals are easily affected by the concrete and steel buildings where they can be blocked or reflected, which creates an inaccurate measurement. Now, when a GPS receiver is outdoors, it can achieve accuracy within a few meters. However, while indoors, they actually require some additional assistance. Assistance. Now, Apple Maps and Google Maps are very accurate because the cell phones utilize additional information that derives from broadcasts from wireless access points and what's called their base station IDs. And that information helps identify the XY location in the two dimensional world. Again, this is because of Apple, Google, and Skyhook having a very accurate database that's been achieved by collecting vast amounts of crowdsourced data provided by the billions of cell phones that have been sharing location data every single day. Now, how do they get away with sharing that information? Well, read through your terms of service agreement that you just clicked on when you loaded the recent app. But unfortunately, only two-dimensional information was collected and never altitude. Now, can these be used in the future? Absolutely, yes. But to do that, those databases would have to be created that included the altitude information and then maintained with accurate information as access points moved, get replaced, which is not something that's very likely to be maintained and even less likely to be shared. But once a device has altitude and the elevation can be calculated, how do I get that data to the 911 call taker at the ECC or PSAP? Today in the Heritage 911 network that exists, the location information is determined by looking up in a database based on the caller's telephone number. Now for landlines, it's your billing address. But for wireless calls, location gets provided through a query to the wireless carrier at the time of the call. Now the response that the ECC 
CDC actually gets might just seem a little bit crude, and there's an example in the written version of this blog. However, keep in mind that this capability was just a band-aid fix for a system that was built for stationary endpoints that had a sudden influx of wireless endpoints. What's displayed is the latitude and longitude, along with uncertainty factors and accuracy figures. However, a field may not even exist for altitude or elevation. So, even if the data exists at the carrier, there needs to be a way to convey that information to emergency service call takers at the ECC and what that information represents above sea level, above ground level, which is another change that's greatly needed that extends beyond the carriers. And in all fairness, before Z-axis can become a reality, that's got to be worked out. Once again, I'll use my TV analogy. Despite a TV program being broadcast in color, if you only have a black and white TV, that's what you're going to see. Likewise, if you have a color TV, but you're watching a 1950s I Love Lucy rerun, all you're going to see is black and white. Remember, 911 information is part of an end-to-end -end solution. Altitude versus elevation. Just in case you missed the point earlier, altitude reporting must be ratified through some standards and its relationship to the ground elevation at the device's location. Questions like buildings with different elevations in the front and the rear. Which one is measured? What data source is used for the altitude of the ground outside of the building? That's needed calculate the elevation of the caller. Many times when a large building is being constructed, the grade or elevation of the property is dramatically changed from when it may have been measured. That elevation may have changed by 20 feet or more, and that could seriously affect the accuracy of the elevation that's being calculated. With a call for emergency services, wrong location information can be as significant as no information at all. So in closing, while determining location is not difficult, Difficult. Even today, determining altitude can be a bit of a challenge. And just wanting to get the information isn't really enough. It reminds me of an old joke from one of my favorite comedians, Steve Martin, on becoming a millionaire. You can be a millionaire and never pay tax. First, get a million dollars. Now, <laughs> <laughs> if it were only that easy. That wraps up this audio version of my recent blog, just how high are you? Cellular Altitude, Part 2. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Fletch911. You can check out all my blogs and podcasts at Fletch.tv. Be sure to like and subscribe below. That way you'll be immediately notified whenever a new podcast is published. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next time.